I do identify uh, with the character on some levels. I knew how it was to be bullied sometimes in school and um, when I was uh, growing up and when I was in high school I was basically the whole time I was there I was pretending to be something that I'm not because I had to fit the social, you know, whatever everybody expected from me, um, which was to be a boy and play soccer and on and on and on. Um, so I was trying, but I was never, like, I was a very, like, gentle, very skinny boy. So I was always a target for bullying. Um, and I knew how, like, it, it is a bit different than Eden, but I did know how it was to to keep your identity as a secret and not let ever anybody know, even though I was still a boy back then. Um, yeah, my family, my family was very supporting, so it, it is, uh, you know, they did at first, my mom tried to convince me that maybe it's a phase and it will go away, which is exactly what happens to Eden in the movie, but since my career started at a very young age, I, I became uh, independent very early, so for me, my parents trying to explain me may that maybe it's a phase and it's not gonna work, it wasn't as, it didn't affect me as much as it affects Eden in the movie, because like I could do whatever I want, and, and, and Eden is still like in school and she's still living at her father's home. Um, yeah, so I guess that was the things I had in common with Eden. Well, for me as a kid, it was a little hard because in my town, nobody ever explained to me that there was such a thing. So I grew up um, being very confused and it took me some years to understand that what I'm going through is normal and that it exists because at first I didn't know what's, what the hell is going on with me. And so in terms of acceptance, Tel Aviv is a very accepting place, but um, we're still facing a lot of struggles like in Israel, so um, I read on the news about a girl in uh, south of Israel. Basically, her mom doesn't send her to school for like almost half a year now because she's being bullied uh, all the time by the, by some kids in the school. And the school is threatening her, like the mom, that they're gonna send authorities, and they basically blaming the girl, the trans girl, the whole thing. They blaming it on her. They're saying like she's coming to the school uh, too provocative. And for them, provocative is just having like nail polish and growing a long hair. Instead of, you know, coming to these kids and telling them you can't be doing the things you do to this girl or you're going to be expelled from the school, they blame it on the mom that doesn't send the girl to school. And then we have also soon-to-be education minister is, uh, is openly uh, homophobic. You know, it's something that is very terrifying to know that the person who's going to be in charge of the education in Israel is uh, openly homophobic and he doesn't have a problem to talk about it in the media. Um, yeah, there's a lot of issues we're facing and it's a scary time, but it's also, you know, it's a time that we have the voice to, to speak, so I guess that's one good thing. I'm always there and I'm trying to do my best to, to be the best spokesperson I can for our community and like prevent those kind of things from happening and if they're happening you know just give a fight back and not just um, sit and be quiet about it. Mm -hmm.